Riverside. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. White. Good morning, Mrs. Angel. How are you today? I am absolutely fantastic. It is week eight. Um, I don't want to be anywhere else. Wow. Uh, week eight. Week eight for us Goodness. up in Queensland. And the weather is hot. And uh, <laughs> last week or two weeks ago, I was complaining that the weather was cold. Um, now yes. we're well over 30. I've got a sweat up every day, um, but I'm Goodness not going to. I'm not going to complain today about the weather because I think it's quite glorious. How are you? Oh, uh, not not experiencing the same glorious weather as you. In fact, I looked at the uh, forecast for next week, and it's going to get even colder. Down to 16 on one day, but uh, oh, I'm great. I'm great. Yeah, towards the end of term three, everyone's really, really busy uh, getting all sorts of things done at every year level. There's a lot going on at the school. I. Love it. It's it's yeah. the time um, when everybody's exhausted, uh, but things are ramping up. Things uh, are ramping up. We have a very, very special guest with us today. Um, I would like to say hello to Tony Corrin, who is joining us as our guest. Hey, Tony, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. That's wonderful. He is joining us up from, well, down from the very tip of Australia, and we are going to be telling his story. Uh, uh, Tony is a teacher. And we're going to talk about how he how he came to be and what his plans are for the future. So I am going to tell us about uh, not super organised here, obviously, because I'm planning for my technology to load any second. So uh, Tony is of the alumni of South City Christian School um, at the C uh, Y AAA Hopevale, and his secondary school that he attended. He was homeschooled. Uh, can you help me with the um, pr pronunciation? Yep, Is it Sarai? Uh, Sarai. Sarai, yep. beautiful. Sarai Christopher High School in Japan. And he has uh, been at university at Victoria University of Wellington. And he's also currently studying at UniSQ doing a master's. Uh, Mr. White, can you tell us a lot more about Tony, please? Love to. Tony grew up in New Zealand until the age of nine when he moved to Australia for his father's work. Throughout the 12 years since, he travelled around Australia in a caravan for a year and a half. He got stuck in Japan for 13 months, lived in New Zealand and now resides in the small town of Cohen in far north Queensland. Despite being exposed to education early, teaching wasn't something that Tony considered until his, he was a teacher's aide in an IB school in Japan. That experience made him pursue education as a major and he hasn't looked back. Tony enjoys finding interesting and effective ways to communicate and in his free time, he dabbles in technology from 3D printing to computer repairs to developing tools to make life as a teacher more efficient and he also fixes my levels in recording. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it just solved a huge issue that we've been having, a technological issue. It took him about three seconds. Tony, welcome. It's great oh, to have you so aboard. Well. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. Oh, it's... I'm really, I'm really enjoying the weather. Um, just feels like home. Yes, it is. It's. <laughs> is it a bit hotter for you up in far north Queensland, or is it about, um, about the same as what it is right now? Um, I think it's about the same. Uh, unexpectedly, hmm. I was expecting it's usually a bit, a couple degrees warmer than Brisbane. Um, yeah. To us, a cold day is when it's below twenty. Yeah. Um, Goodness. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice. I haven't needed to wear my thermals for a while. Yes, and you won't be needing them what, during your time here now in Brisbane. Um, yeah. So it is so wonderful to have you with us. We always kick off our interviews with our guests with um, with wanting to hear from you. Who is a teacher who significantly impacted you? Yeah, I I I thought about this question. It's a bit of a toss up. Um, um, I think we'll go with um, my former head of campus, um, Ben Foran. Mm -hmm. Tell us about him. Why was he such a positive impact on you? Um, uh, I think there's so many things. Um, for example, he's, he's a really hard worker. Um, he'd put in like 50 hours a week every day and he'd do it because he was so, um, motivated to improve the educational outcomes of the students at the school. And I think that's that was super, super respectable. Um, he personally just helped mentor me um, when I was first starting. So I learned a lot of behavioral management practices, uh, more effective teaching. Uh, and he always had an eye for 
um, yeah, what was best for the students. I think a lot of the schools up in the Cape um, can be caught on other things, but for Ben, it's well, can the child, can the child read and write, you know, and um, he had a huge lens on equity and a huge focus in the school. And I think that um, that priority has really resonated with me through my teaching experience. So, so did you meet him in your first year of teaching or whilst you were studying? Yeah, no, I met, met him in my first year of teaching. Um, he, yeah, took me under his wing uh, from day one and <laughs> I've just learned a massive amount from him. Fantastic. And I, I loved that you were really struggling with who it was that you were going to name and fame. And what we love to do on this show is name and fame as many brilliant teachers as we can. So tell us about the person that you were struggling with there, um, uh, who came a very close second. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, so that'd be my dad. Uh, he's, he was also a teacher. He's retired now, but I think he, he's uh, necessarily had a huge influence on, on me. Just, um, yeah. I mean, throughout the time I was homeschooled, um, it was, I can't really think of anything better than having a, a teacher who knows how to teach as effectively as he did. And he just made the joy of learning. Um, and it really gave me a focus for how learning can be enjoyable and how when you're achieving um you take pride in your work and you enjoy the process so i think um that's why he's been a huge influence in my life yeah, that's good well and now you're definitely going to get some good christmas presents as well because you you mentioned your dad so well done tony <laughs> yes yes i'll send a link <laughs> <laughs> excellent and so you were home so homeschooled um so that was that as you were traveling around australia yeah yeah so i think it's broken up into like two stints basically so I when I was in New Zealand um I was homeschooled for um probably two terms two terms just to accelerate me ahead of what um my school had already gotten me to uh so that was great I actually homeschooled with my best friend so I don't know <laughs> if you can think of anything better than just having <laughs> school with just you and your best friend for That's like awesome. two terms it was fantastic <laughs> um and then, yeah, after uh, we left Hopevale, I homeschooled for a, a little bit, um, just due to the nature of the programs that I was uh, exposed to and my dad's teaching, I'd pretty much finished um, school. Uh, I'd say I'd finished around 15. Um, and then I did university a little bit early. So uh, it was in... It was good to go and homeschool while I was traveling around Australia because you could take on a more, um, mm. I feel like I was equipped with the knowledge and understanding to better explore the world around me. Mm. And Australia is such an amazing, diverse place. There's so many interesting places there that here that, um, yeah, I felt like the education and my homeschooling experience really equipped me to make the most of that. Yeah, it so you, sounds like it sounds like you were taught about attitude before the material in in your learning. So to take pride in your learning and to to focus on that. Do you think that's helped you as well? I think it's really. I think so. I think it's easy to take pride in your learning when success feels effortless, and I think that's a combination of um, good teaching and um, yeah, good motivation. Uh, I think part of my passion when I teach is to have the joy of learning. And I believe that every student can succeed. It's about giving them the right supports. So I think cultivating that sense of achievement um, is something that I try to do in my job as a teacher. And your dad obviously instilled in you. So we... Um... Tony and I um, have met just a couple of days ago um, serendipitously when um, when planets aligned and um, turns out that Tony, so uh, up on the Cape, the schools are using a lot of direct instruction up on the Cape and in my conversations with Tony just recently, 
I um, found out that he he was taught using direct instruction. So I want to unpack. So I feel like our learners, our listeners could, and we may be sitting with a genius because, to be fair, he did just fix Will's um, <laughs> three years worth of sound issues in literally three and yeah. a half seconds. It but- blindly navigated me through every single tab to go to. <laughs> Yes. Genius. So we may be sitting with a genius, but I would also like to think that um, your extreme confidence with learning also came from um, the programs and then obviously the fidelity and great teaching that was um, that was used to teach you those programs. So can you tell our listeners a bit about some of the programs that you were taught by, not taught, your dad taught you, but taught um, the programs you, you used during your homeschooling? Sure, sure. So um, I actually found this super old video of me on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a video of me at four years old um, learning to read with this direct instruction program called Phonics. You you are definitely sharing that video and that is going on our our socials, but carry on. Fantastic. Um, um, So I learned to read using Phonics, which is like this computerized direct instruction program. Uh, and then I've used um, reading mastery, spelling mastery, connecting math concepts. Uh, I finished essentials for algebra when I was 10. Um, I did essentials for writing. And then I used a direct instruction like program from SRA uh, called Understanding US History. Oh, and my favorite program of all time, but no one knows about. I my swear, my dad has like the only copy in the world is um it's called it's a direct instruction program called your world in facts a memory development program and i feel like if anything was to credit my confidence it was that program i just succinctly remember that program as being like oh i can remember things now after going through it that's cool cool. your world in facts yeah great it took me like a good two months to figure out the book name i think there's like only one google (laughs) result Really? Um, it's, just, it's just incredible how, um, I don't know, for me, such a good program can just be lost to time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and right. is, it a, is it an Engelman program? Is it a... Um, yes. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Engelman or a car nine, I can't remember, but it's Fair. definitely SRAGI. Fantastic. Well, we're going to find it and uh, and dust it off. That's really, really exciting. Yeah. Great. And so I want to go back to what you said before. So it's easy to learn when the learning um, learning is effortless. And that's yes. the joy of these direct, in pro- direct instruction programs because the way they're structured and if they're delivered with enthusiasm, uh, yes. you can get through things so fast and you're teaching it. It's all underpinned by science. So it's going to get things into memory. You're ret- it's built in retrieval. It's, it's in, out, it's in, out. You're remembering things for life. And then you end up like Tony and you end up going to uni at 15 and up on the far, far north um, changing lives with kids in schools, which is so, 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 so exciting. It is. I, I think, I mean, every kid loves to learn. They just don't know it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to learn more about the world and to have such a, have a program that delivers it so systematically and so effectively, um, I, I couldn't imagine teaching anything more else because I can't find a system that's more effective. Yeah. Fantastic. And so you said in your bio that you weren't originally planning on teaching. So what were you originally planning on doing? <laughs> yeah. So it's a bit of a career adjustment. Um, I enrolled into physics as my major. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so when, so the story goes, I was um, visiting some of the friends I'd made from my high school visit in Japan um, for a quick three weeks uh, in March of 2020. Mm. Uh, But turns out there was this global pandemic going on. And um, so my flights just got cancelled and cancelled and cancelled for 13 months. So (laughs) in the interim, I managed to do a year um, studying online, but there was about three months before I started enrollment, um, started attending uni online that I had nothing to do because we were in lockdown. Um, so I got this opportunity to teach at the elementary school of the high school that I was working at as a teacher aide. And I thought that'd be fantastic. So, um, yeah, the more I went 
the more I went and the more I taught, the more I thought to myself, this is, this is something I can see myself doing. Um, like I had, <laughs> like when you look back, education's always been a part of my life. Like I was teaching kids <laughs> using the phonics program myself at like six or seven. Um, and then I've been, I've tutored like year 11, 12 students in a variety of subjects from like chemistry to bio to English. Um, so it's something that I've just enjoyed doing. And so I thought to myself, why not take the next step and, um, actually make this a job? Yep. Absolutely. Very few positive things came out of COVID, but I suspect the fact that you have turned your attention to education will be among the very few things. That's great. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. That's really cool. So you were doing teaching aid over there. What sort of stuff was yes. that day to day? Was that working with individuals one-on-one -on -one or was that more teaching mm. in class? Um, for the most part, it was working with uh, disengaged students. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, based on my looks, um, I don't look as old as I am. Uh, <laughs> and just the interest that I was able to link in to build up a relationship with students to get them to reintegrate into the classroom. Uh, that was something that I enjoyed doing. Uh, but I also had opportunities to um, do some teaching. There was a presentation I'd made. Um, I'd used some of my 3D, 3D modeling and rendering skills to create this simulation of um, the sun and the earth to explain the seasons and the orbit um, and the day and night cycle, uh, which was, which was fun, fun challenge to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's cool to, cool to use new and emerging technologies to help students understand things better. Like um, programs can always be improved. And uh, I think it's a cool way to uh, have more interest in and activate the interest of child of children to learn. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And because sometimes the kids can, so every child can learn, but sometimes kids forget that they can learn or they mm. don't feel as motivated to learn. And so that motivation is, is important, but then often motivation is invigorated by success. So we got to make sure that they're successful. Absolutely. And first and foremost, they've got to be successful. We've got to be able to be teaching at their level to lay that platform for them to be able mm -hmm. to learn but then be able to actually access all of these technologies that we and knowing how to use them, Mr. White, <laughs> um, is really important. <laughs> um, <this> pointed comment. <laughs> uh, to be able to invigorate that love of learning is very, very, very cool. To see that little sparkle in a kid's eye is, uh, is yeah. very, very special. Yeah. And I think that's what led me to the profession, you know, just yeah. the gotcha the when the student gets in everything clicks and they yep. understand this concept yeah. that weren't un able to understand it's just so cool to yeah. see so yeah. so so sure and it's such a cool thing to be able to work with uh students that are disengaged or they're not you know they're not buying in for whatever reason and to work them out and to sit down and talk to them and get to know them and and, and see their perspective and to show them again like you said the joy of learning and how they can because like you said, all kids love to learn. They just need to be reminded of it sometimes or shown about it because yeah. you can't just remind them. You need to actually show them. Yeah. I really love that. That's fantastic. And, um, you know, getting to do that at such a young uh, stage of your career, I think is brilliant. Fantastic. I um, don't want to harp on about Tony's results, but I did forget to mention before that um, in talking to Tony about, so we, we teach CMC and um, Connecting Mass Concepts and Essentials for Algebra um, at our school. And um, and when you finish Essentials for Algebra, it's kind of at a grade eight level-ish. Um, so the fact that he, which is um, you know, my son's 13, turning 14 this year, he's in grade eight. So the fact that, um, that Tony finished that when he was 10 uh, is very, very, very impressive. But then I asked him about his NAPLAN results. So in Australia for our um, international visit visitors um, who are listening in NAPLAN is um, the National Assessment uh, the name for Literacy and Numeracy. I did just mumble over one of those. <laughs> things. Anyway, um, but basically it's our Literacy and Numeracy test to kind of see how our, ki how our kids across Australia are going in, in yep. their Literacy and Numeracy. And there's different scales. Um, and, Tony, how did you go in NAPLAN? Um, I went pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I was above, <laughs> above um, average in everything. And then probably the best result was... Um, my maths, I didn't have a dot because I was too high. 
<laughs> so so you get a you get a box and whisker chart, don't you? And there's a dot to, that that delineates where you are. Yeah, it was just was, you were off the was chart. Just, <laughs> yeah, couldn't, yeah, couldn't, I'm not couldn't. quite sure how that des- why they design a test that you can place above, but hmm. anyway. That's what oh, I there you go. I'm not complaining. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's qu- quite a story. Um, spoiler alert, not a story I can tell, Tony, because um, I was on the chart, always on the chart, so I wouldn't know how it feels <laughs> to be off the chart, which is very, very, very cool. Um, so we talk about magical moments. We talk about teaching tales. Um, unfortunately, on um, this podcast, we also talk about Mr. White's um, wisecracks. So Ah, Yes. So um, he's always got a wisecrack that he likes to let us know about that he has um, used in his class. Um, don't feel obliged to laugh, Tony. Um, here you right. go. What is weekly wisecracks? What do you got, Mr. White? Do, 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 do. So last week being uh, book week, uh, we were talking uh, amongst the staff and one of the teachers in the library had, had dressed up and she had dressed up as Where's Wally? And I sort of, and she said to me, oh, did you, you know, what did you dress? I didn't get to do it. I was really wrapped that you did it and you dressed up as, what did you dress up as again? And she goes, where's Wally? You, you spoke to me last week. You remember what I was dressed up as? I said, no, no, I couldn't see you. I couldn't find you. Uh, because you're coming <laughs> Tony, you saw that coming a mile out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was shaking his head. Um, uh, well, good. No, it was, it was all right. It was all right. It was all right. Well done. Well done. Oh, keep, your teammate, keep your teammates on their toes. I, I like that it. That was very funny. That's good. Oh. All right. Uh, you, Mr. Is it Mr. Corrin? Mr. Corrin? Yes, Mr. Corrin. Mr. Corrin. Excellent. I was right the first time. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Corrin is going to share a teaching tale with us. So this is one of those funny stories, one of the when kids keep you on their toes. Um, wait, for, wait for the sting, though, Tony. <laughs> All right. So, two, um, two toes. Dun, dun, dun. Here you go. Um, so yeah, I've, I worked at, um, I've been at the school for almost a year now. And, uh, there was this recurring thing that kept happening to me. Students would keep asking me, come up to me and, um, you know, students ask questions all the time, but there was this one particular question that kept coming and they'd approach me and say something like, Mr. How old are you? Or Mr. Are you a teenager? <laughs> um, and no matter how I replied, um, it'd just be a recurring thing. One day it'd be one student, the next day it'd be another student. And then another two weeks, you know, the first student that asked me had forgotten about it. Um, so eventually when people started asking me how old I was, I'd, I'd ask them to guess. Oh. And so, um, you know, dangerous. They'd, so dangerous. they'd think about it <laughs> and they're like, mm, 17. And then I have to remind them I'm not a teenager and they'd have another think about it. And they'd be like, mm, 30, <laughs> mm, 45. I even got 81 once, which I don't know quite how that works. Um, but you know, you did say higher. So, I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I did. Uh, but it's, it is certainly, um, certainly interesting by now, 10 months in, um, you know, i got a cup, I got a question like that a couple of weeks ago, but, uh, the students were able to assure uh, their peers that I wasn't in fact a teenager and I was an adult. Yeah. Um, but no, that's that's the students say the say the funniest things sometimes. They do. Like, they they, do. And they have no, do. No concept of time to be measured in years. They don't know <laughs> that. Don't even encourage that. Let it just just let it go. <laughs> One thing I can guarantee you, um, Tony, is that when you become um, you'll never become a middle aged woman. But um, <laughs> as a middle-aged woman, you don't ever ask, um, how old do you think I am? Because it no. hurts your soul. There's a, I've, we, we used to have to wear a, a birthday badge. Or it's my birthday. <laughs> well, it's the worst day of the year because every kid wants to know how old you are and they, they guess. Oh, it's insulting. Absolutely 81. insulting. Oh. 81? All right. Well, one of them looks at me. He looked me up and down and his mum, he goes, um... He goes, well, my mum's 38, so you must be, and he gave me another look up and down, 
goes, 76. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, 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 so he even brutal. had a benchmark. He even had a benchmark to work to. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, of course, you were kind of in the same ballpark. No, no. You could be her grandmother, is what he said to me, basically. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Anyway, oh, um, it's good. They keep us on our toes. It's never they boring, do. that's for sure. Um, no. Nope. We also want to know a magical moment. So I'll just remind you, magical moments when you remember why you chose to be a teacher, you know that you've made a difference. Um, so magical moment. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Xavier. That's beautiful. <laughs> What's your magical moment, Tony? Um, yeah, I had a magical moment earlier um, this year. So. Uh, as you do in Australian schools, you uh, have to create a report and deliver it to the teachers. And we use uh, it <laughs> to the parents of students. And so, um, you know, we use this opportunity to catch up um, and check on the child's learning. So I work in composite classrooms. So I work with um, preps to grade threes. And we had this um, year, year one kid who we just finished the... Um, Reading Mastery K program, so the prep program, and um, they they can read at a good level by the end of the uh, K program, and so we were discussing how um, the certain students. I was discussing with his mother how he's done an amazing job, uh, and I asked her if she's ever had him read a book to. Her. And she said no. So we pulled out the K program book, and since he'd completed it, uh, I was just like, any page. Did. Um, so the student flicked to a page and read like a champion. No mistakes, <laughs> co with confidence, <laughs> and it was just the it was just a magical moment seeing yes. <laughs> the look of pride and joy on that mother's face that their student oh, that her great. son was able to read. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, that's a moment I'm not going to forget. Absolutely. That Absolutely. Is, that's the magic, it's exactly, isn't it? It's exactly what a magical moment is. Yeah. Yeah. And as a teacher, I guess what we're, what the whole point of this podcast is to like remind teachers that they're absolutely changing lives. And yep. if they had chosen any other profession, you're not going to get moments like that. Like you're not, you're not no. going to get those uh, moments when you are given a reminder that, that, that little person's life has changed because of you yep. and that um that little bond then um that you, you created a moment for a parent as well which is super 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 cool oh tony i'm so glad you chose teaching and not <laughs> physics i mean you may have found the cure you may have found the cure for cancer but in the in the meantime <laughs> so, you hey poke dollars dos hey <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are going to play a little game. Um, we're going to bring the tone down. Ah, yes. So what? Mm. Indeed, I said say what. Um, so <laughs> the the name of the game is Say What, Tony. Um, I'm going to ask some questions, and All you right. guys are going to give me some answers. Luckily yes. for you, Tony, the number uh, the answers are always numbers. So I feel like Tony's like numbers. already at an advantage. <laughs> um, English teacher. <laughs> excellent. All right. Um, I'm wondering what part of the world I might start in. I think that we need to tell everybody a bit more about um, the little town of Cohen. So my question mm. to you, Mr. White, is yes. um, as we all know um, or maybe don't know, Cohen is a beautiful little uh, place in far, it's a small community situation in se central Cape York in far north Queensland. Yes. It's, uh, it is north of Cairns, which is probably the last thrive, you know, metropolis city, really, um, in the Definitely. far north. And I want to know how many kilometres north of Cairns is the town of Cairns. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, how many kilometres north of Cairns? Uh, and everyone, hands up, because is... we don't we don't Google. We don't uh, Google. Um, okay, now is this as a crow flies or is this on the major highway? Um, it is uh, as the crow, crow, crow as the crow flies. Hey Siri, have, <laughs> as the crow flies. Sure, yeah. 
Oh that, well, that, that makes it better for you. Yeah, that's yes, <laughs> yes, it does. That's uh, well, it's quite clearly yes yeah. in mid. Uh, it's about um, uh, carry the one. But it's about, mm-hmm. it's, about, it's, about <laughs> it's nine. It's not nine hundred and twelve kilometers. Nine hundred and twelve. Excellent. North of Cairns, yes. <laughs> that's a that's a long way. Um, all right. Long way. And you tell oh, like she did. <laughs> you tell me, Tony. Um, how know, how far is it? Um, unless unless um, there are no speed limits in front of Queensland, I don't oh. think we'll be able to make it in eight hours, which is the usual length of the trip, seven or eight hours. So I think uh, as the crow flies, we're probably looking mm-hmm. at five hundred. 500 Ks. You know what? I'm going to give that to you because it's 580, but you know, you did have to, you did have to carry some ones and work out actually like as the crow flies. Uh, So it is 580 kilometers North. Um, So well done. That is one to our guest. Oh, it's a long way off, wasn't it? You were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You were thinking more like Bamago. Yeah. I I might have been. I'm sure. Yes. I might have been. Confused. (laughs) Uh, Um, Bamago. so is so Co- is it the Colin Cape York Aboriginal Australia Academy that you are at, Tony? Um, yes, Colin Cape York Australian Aboriginal Academy. Fantastic. So in Colin, um, obviously you've then driven that um, five hundred and eighty kilometres, or you've flown um, five hundred and eighty mm-hmm. kilometres because you're a crow, and you've landed yep. in Colin. My next question uh, is what? Uh, 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 in uh, obviously you've done that in 2021 because that was a census date. I'm interested in knowing ah. what was the population of Cohen in the 2021 census. Well, it's a small town. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I told you that just before, actually. So that's. Uh... <laughs> I reckon that was just before the Jacksons left. Excellent. So I'm going to yeah, say it was 300, 320. 320. Excellent. All right. And what do you Ooh, think it is? That's uh, pretty good. I'm going to go with 261. Ooh. Well, I think that finally Mr. White's done some research prior to uh, <laughs> <laughs> the 2021 census. There was 320 people living in Cohen. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, White. I must confess, money. that's not because of my knowledge of Cohen or far north Queensland. That was because I thought, I don't know what Shaz is going to do here. I'm going to look up the population of Cohen. There you go. There <laughs> and you... so, ah, I still got it right. Well played. Well played. It is one all. So one the, all. The tiebreaker. Tiebreaker territory. No pressure, Tony. We are yeah. going to go all the way to where Tony was locked down for 13 months uh-huh. and where right. where the spark was ignited. Mm. I want to know how mm. many teachers there Ooh. are in Japan. I'm going to go, but obviously as May, um, from May of 2023, I want to know. So just d- deduct your calculations. So May of 2023, how many teachers were there in Japan working full-time? Uh, working full-time? Working full-time. Okay, well, I'm going to work backwards here. So mm-hmm. I believe there are about 124 million people in Japan. Mm. And if there are, I don't know what percentage of people are mm. teachers, I'm going to go work. I, I, yeah, okay. All right, I'll, I'll forget that. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just think. Uh, I'm going to say that there are full-time teachers, you say. <laughs> I didn't stutter. Full, full-time, full-time teachers. Full-time. Yes. Well, there are about 280,000. 280,000. Interesting. And very interesting. Um, what do you see, think? I was hoping you'd give me a bit of information to, like, if you knew how many teachers were in Australia, then you mm. could extrapolate that to Japan. Yes. But you didn't. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, how many teachers? You did, he did I tell think... you the, the population, though, um, of yes. Japan. Uh, but was that a red hair? Pretty... I think he's pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, I reckon. What was his number? Two hundred and no. How many million? To... I can't. I can't remember. Two, did you no, say no, two hundred like million? Teach, how many teachers? Yes. How many teachers? Two, I can't remember what I said. What did I say? Two hundred. <laughs> he said two hundred and eighty thousand. Two hundred eighty thousand. You did, and um, there was three hundred and eleven thousand uh, full time teachers in Australia in twenty twenty three. In case you were wondering, Tony. So. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Then I'm thinking I'll go with. Um, oh, what an idiot! Oh, two, 
181,000. <laughs> hang on. Uh, yeah, very clever, very clever. But no, hang on, hang on. This is not cut and dry yet because you do realise that Japan is a very ageing population. So mm. there might not be much mm. call for teachers at mm. the moment. No, despite yeah. the population being five times like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you, okay. you, you'd be wrong. Um, because there's actually 1.47 oh. million. Yeah, right. I was miles on. Million oh, teachers my... in Japan working full time in May 2023. What a way to cry. I had, I, I had wow. you won all so as well. There's about oh! like 1.3% 1. 1. of both countries' population. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just, I'm looking at the now. There's about 20, is there 24 million in Australia right now? Yeah. And so there was 322,000. Anyway, I don't want to, I often use anymore. this as a yeah. question. So I don't actually want Whitey to know the map. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, yes. So let's yeah, not, yeah, no. let's not simplify <laughs> it for yeah. him because uh, it's definitely a go to <laughs> question for me. So well done. Yeah. Uh, well done, Tony. Tony. Take the win. He's taken the win. Well take the population of my town, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll yeah, take hey, 2021, you weren't there in 2021. Uh, so it's all data. True. Yes, you were still um, locked up, locked down in Japan. So um, you didn't know the Jacksons <laughs> moved to town and That's right. um, the Jacksons That's and the right. Smiths. Yes. Um, all right. <laughs> I have absolutely loved talking with you, Tony. Um, you're an absolute gem for education and making a massive difference, I'm certain, up there, um, up on the Cape. So thank you so much for choosing education and choosing to talk with us tonight. Absolutely. I've most enjoyed it. Wonderful. Uh, and Mr White? Yes. I'm going to see you next week. I'm going to see you next week. I'm looking forward to it. Me It's going to be too. great. Me too. Me too. All right. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Have a wonderful thank week, you. all. See you. you Riverside.